Good morning and welcome to Adult Storytime. We're starting a new series um, this morning where I'll be taking chapters or short snippets out of the book, The Grass is Always Greener, Over the Septic Tank, and it was written by Irma Bombeck. And it was originally published in 1972. So it is an older book, but some of the, the stories and, and parts of it are still humorous and still hold true to today's life. So the first part that I'm going to read, and this is for those people who are looking for new houses or looking to move into a development out of, out of town into the more rural settings. It's entitled, Station Wagons Ho, Staking Out a Claim. It was either Thomas Jefferson, or maybe it was John Wayne, who once said, your foot will never get well as long as there is a horse standing on it. It was logic like this that attracted 30 million settlers to the suburbs following World War II. The suburbs were a wilderness with nothing to offer but wide, open spaces, virgin forests, and cool breeze at night that made you breathe deep, close your eyes, and sigh. Oh, who's fertilizing with sheep dip? My husband held out against migration for as long as he could. Then one day we heard from our good friends, Marge and Ralph, who together with their two children set out in one of the first station wagons to a housing development 30 miles south of the city. As Marge wrote, we reached the suburbs on the 14th. There was no water and no electricity in our house, so we had to hole up in a holiday motel for three days. The pool wasn't even heated. The yard is barren and there are no sidewalks. Mud is everywhere. There is no garbage pickup and our old stove won't fit in the new hole. And the general store has never heard of oregano. We have aluminum foil at the windows to keep the sun from fading the children. I feel like a turkey. We have to claim our mail at the post office a mile and a half away. There is no super. We have our own washer and dryer, which don't require quarters. I understand, however, that at the end of the month, there is something called a utility bill that is presented to us. There are some bright spots, too. We have a bath and a half. It is wonderful not to have to take numbers anymore. Tomorrow, we are going to visit our first tree. It is situated on the only wooded lot in the subdivision and is owned by the builder's daughter. Please remember us. Doesn't that sound exciting, I said, jumping to my feet. You say the same thing when your soup is hot. Where's your adventurous spirit, I ask. It's a new world out there, full of challenges. We're young yet. We could survive. He put down his paper and swept his arms around to encompass the entire apartment. What? Move and give up all of this? I looked around. I had to iron in the playpen. The kids were stacked in a triple bunk at night like they were awaiting burial at sea. If the phone rang, I had to stand on my husband's face to answer it. The dog slept under the oven next to the crackers. And one day I yawned, stretched my arms, and someone stored the complete works of Dr. Seuss and a pot of African violets on them. You'd never survive, he said. It's a raw frontier, no schools, no churches, and only three registered Republicans. Frankly, I don't think you have the stamina or the threshold of paying for it. Stamina, I shouted. Are you telling me I have no stamina? A woman who has lived on the fourth floor of this apartment building for five years with the stairs out of order has no stamina? I have legs like a discus thrower. As for pain, I have been known to go without support stockings for as long as two hours. Do you honestly think you could move to a land where your mother is a 35 cent toll charge for the first three minutes? I hesitated, then squared my shoulders and I said, yes. It was probably my imagination, but I thought I heard a whip crack and a voice shout, station wagons, ho! The selling of the suburbs made the coronation of Queen Elizabeth look like an impulse. On a Sunday afternoon, you could tour Cinderella's red coach farms Mortgage Manana, Saul Lieberman's Bonsai Gardens, or Bonaparte's Retreat. Live the rest of your life like a weak king. Every development had its gimmick. Flags flying, 
billboards, free rain bonnets, balloons for the kitties, and pom-pom girls that spelled out low interest rates in script. My husband spread out the newspaper and together we went over the plots we had visited. What did you think of Tahitian Village, he asked. Cute, I said, but a little overdone. I mean, dropping the kids into a volcano to play each morning, just... What about Chateau on Waldron's Pond? Call it women's intuition, but I've never trusted a lake that had a sudsing problem on Monday mornings. Want to check out Sherwood Forest? Why not? The sales office of Sherwood Forest was a tree stump surrounded by five or six salesmen dressed in tunics. Nearby was a plastic campfire that held a plastic pig on a spit, and beyond that were 800 plastic houses. Welcome to Sherwood Forest, said a salesman, schlepping along in a brown frock, a rope, and a pair of sandals. I'm Friar Tuck, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. If this is Sherwood Forest, I ask, where are the trees? You're standing over it, he said, staring at my knees. My husband picked up the price list. You'll find that it's in keeping with the Robin Hood philosophy, he smiled. We bolted toward the car, pursued by six merry men. The adventure of moving to the suburbs had nearly worn off when we stumbled into suburban gems. How much are the houses, asked my husband. We have one standard price in suburban gems, said the salesman, $15,000. We couldn't believe it. Could we see the tracks? We asked. He pulled down a giant map behind him, saw it with blocks representing houses. I'm afraid we're pretty sold out, he said. The diamond section went before we even advertised. Jade went fast, so did Ruby and Pearl. I even see Zircon is blocked off. What's left, we asked. Frankly fake, he said. Climb in the car and I'll drive you over to the site so you can get the feel of the development. When we pulled up in front of the house, I couldn't believe it. I got out of the car and ran through the two-story iron gates, up the half-mile driveway to the veranda porch, touched the massive white pillars, and ran my fingers over the large carved door. It's Tara, I said, my eyes misting. I've come home to Tara. You understand this is only the model home, said the salesman. I buried my face in the wisteria that crept along the windows. We understand. Could we see the rest of it? The double doors opened and our voices echoed our pleasure in the house from the huge foyer to the curved stairway that led to the second floor. Then inside the living room, I saw it, a fireplace. A warmth came over me. I could see my husband standing against it in a sports coat with leather patches on the elbows, holding a brandy and a copy of Emerson's essays. I visualized me hanging a Della Robbia wreath over it at Christmas and laughing children basking in its reflection after a snow. We'll take it, I said suddenly. As my husband lifted his hand to touch my face in a gesture of love, he was amazed to find a pen in it. If you will just sign the purchase agreement, said the salesman, we can get on with the details of your new home in Frankly Fake. I squeezed my husband's arm as he signed the agreement. We've never had a fireplace before. Oh, then you want the model with the fireplace, asked the salesman. We nodded. Well now, is there anything else about the Williamsburg model that you like? We like everything, I said. Oh, then you want the second floor, the extra baths, the tiled foyer, the stairway, the veranda porch, the larger lot? Are you saying all those things are extra? The Williamsburg is our best home, he said stiffly. Our basic 15,000 is much the same, only on a smaller scale. How small, asked my husband. Let's see, he said, checking his price list. The Pee Wee has three bedrooms and a one-car garage, spouting to protect your porch from the sun, full landscaping, and 850 luxurious square feet. Does it have a family room? Two of them, both in white fixtures. But the peewee does have the pillars in the porch, I ask anxiously. I told you it has everything except the second story, stairway, entranceway, and extra lot. Now that covers about everything except what you want to do about the garage. What about the garage, asked my husband. Do you plan on putting your car in it? It crossed our minds. I see. 
I only mention it because a lot of people like to have a driveway leading to it. You don't have to, you understand, but it does get a little muddy and it's worth the extra cost to some people to have it filled in. But everything else is included in the original price, asked my husband. Absolutely. All you have to do is make some decisions regarding the quality of materials. For example, all wiring is borderline standard unless you want to pay extra and have it pass inspection. We nodded. I think that's wise. Now about your tub. Do you want it hooked up under your shower? We nodded numbly. I assume you did because you already said you wanted to put a car in your garage and that's where we usually store the tub until the owner tells us otherwise. Speaking of storage, you are aware that without the second story, there is a crawl space over your entire house for storage. We smiled happily. Do you have some way of getting up there or do you want us to install a pull down stairway as an extra? Let's see, apart from the paint, floor covering, spouting, storm windows, kitchen hardware, countertops, light fixtures and keys, which are all extra, I think that does it. His fingers fairly raced across the keys of the tabulator as the extras mounted. Finally, he smiled and said, the final tab is 29,500. Welcome to Frankly Fake. As my husband handed back the pen, he smiled, waved it aside and said, keep it as a token of our mutual faith in one another. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw him add pen at 59 cents, bringing the total to $29,500.59. And that is where we're going to stop today. I hope you enjoyed it and got a little chuckle out of parts of that. How many have had the struggles in moving and building new homes? So it does bring back some memories. So until next time, when we'll take some more out of our book, The Grass is Always Greener Over the Septic Tank. Stay safe, be healthy, have a wonderful week.